This is the Canon EOS R7, and it's a great camera for those who need either its video features or wants to shoot wildlife photography. It does great in high light situations using an APS-C sensor. It's got 32 megapixels, in-body image stabilization, and it can shoot at 30 frames per second using the electronic shutter. However, there's an issue with that electronic shutter. When you use it, you end up getting an effect called rolling shutter. Now, that rolling shutter can affect your images by making them look distorted and warped. I'm shooting right now on an R6, so what I wanted to do in this video was compare the rolling shutter effect on the R7 to that of the R6. So now for the test setup. It's pretty simple. I've drawn a straight line that's one inch wide on a dry erase board, and I'll be comparing an image of that picture of the dry erase board between the R6 and the R7. Now, if you were able to pan those two cameras at exactly the same rate, you can compare those images one to one. But I was doing this mechanically on a Lazy Susan style cake spinner with my skimmer pod on top of it so that I can attach my gimbal and I was able to spin the camera at pretty close to the same speed. So what I had to do is then normalize that shift per the amount of speed that I was introducing to the system by rotating the camera. And to do that, I simply divided by the panning rate. I'll show you how I did that in the next few steps on one note, I took some notes of it, so I could share how I came about the math, then we'll talk about what that means after. Okay, so this is in Photoshop how I got the measurements off of the images that I took. I took two frames that were close together when I shot at 30 frames per second, and this one's for the R7, and I overlaid them with an opacity of 50% on the second image, so I could see both at the same time. So then I used a ruler tool to come in here and measure my one inch measurement that I measured one inch in real life, and that's 100 in, 25 pixels is what it looks like is my one inch measurement and then I want to measure the distance from one point to the next and that tells me how much distance passed between the two frames as I took the pictures and that was 1224 pixels and you can see that up here in the top we'll do the same thing this one's for the R6 there's the transparent layer and one inch and this one is going to equal uh, 119 pixels. I think I actually ended up 120 is what I used when I measured it before. And the distance between frames was 1,534 pixels. Now, since I'm here, I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the angle. And the angle here, it's 99.1 and Photoshop measures from the right anti-clockwise. So what that tells me is that's about a 9.1 degree slope of this object and doing the same thing for the R7. You can see here that it actually has a little bit greater of a slope, uh, 105.8, so that is 15.8 degrees that it's sloping. Now I'm going to need to normalize it, and that's why I took these measurements of the distance and the frame rates of the cameras, but we can pretty quickly see if I was panning around the same speed that I've got 15 degrees of slope here in the R7, and about nine degrees of slope here in the R6. Because of that, there's an indication already that the readout speed of the R6 is faster than that of the R7. But let's transition to the actual math part and look at how that actually shakes out. So we'll start with the things we know. So on the electronic shutter, we know that the R7 will shoot 30 frames per second, the R6 will shoot 20 frames per second, and we'll need that information to kind of calculate how fast we're panning. Now we also know from the test setup that I had a 46 inch distance between the sensor and my one inch panel that I measured on the actual dry erase board. And we can use that to find this angle. You know that half angle, well half angle we'll call phi, the full angle we'll call alpha, so the half angle there is, we need these because that's how we're gonna convert between my one inch measurement on the board here and degrees. And what that will do is let us talk about how, that way we can remove from the equation how far we are from the objects that we're talking about. So next, what we need to do is look at the actual measurements from the pictures. So the distance between the two frames, so one frame prior in the next frame of the R7, we'll do that first, and I measured that as 1,228 pixels, and it has a resol resolution that I measured directly from the image of 132 pixels per inch, and that's specifically at that distance, 46 inches. 
So that's why we need to convert it back to degrees, but we'll do that later on. And this gives just a number in inches. And we'll do the same thing for the R6, which I already showed in Photoshop. And this makes sense. This camera has a little bit lower resolution, 20 megapixels, and this is a little bit better resolution, it's about 32 megapixels. So that kind of makes sense. We're expecting to see those kind of numbers. And also because the shutter speed is slower, this is at 20 frames per second, and this is at 30 frames per second, we expect to see some difference between those if I were panning them at around the same rate. But because that wasn't exact, we also need to look at panning speed. We'll just call that S P and we'll define that as being the distance between frames times the frame rate. And that'll be in units of inches per second is what we'll end up with. And this is between frames. For the R7, we can use this number and its frame rate. That's inches per second, and that's at that specific frame that I took that measurement. Same thing for the R6. And two thirds at that specific frame. So we can see that I actually panned a little faster with the R7 than the R6, and that's probably just because the R7 is a little lighter. It's a little bit smaller of a camera, but I wasn't exact. I tried to do it pretty equally, uh, but it wasn't quite. So now I went and measured in Photoshop what the slope is. So this was. So I measured what the slope was of a straight object that I drew on the dry erase board, and we'll call that our alpha for the R7, and that turned out to be 15.7 degrees, and for the R6, 9.2 degrees. But we need to normalize that because I was panning at different speeds. So we'll normalize by that panning speed, and I'll just call that uh, maybe alpha bar. Uh, without plugging in all the numbers, I'll just go ahead and write the result here. It is 5.625, and that's in degrees per inches per second. Similarly for the R6. So what this means is that for every degree of slope in a straight object, that'll scale with one inch per second panning speed. If we want to convert that like we used before for degrees, degrees per second, we end up with a slightly different number, but it tells the same story. Degrees per degree per second. I'm going to leave those units there so we can understand what that means. So we'll take a look at this, and what this is telling you is that you will have this many degrees of slope in the object per one degree of panning speed. So if you double your panning speed, you will get two of these small units. So if you were panning at 200 degrees per second, just to make it easy math, that's about a 180 in a second, right? So that would give you something really close to, close to about nine degrees of a sloping object. Where with the R6, if you do the same thing at 200 degrees per second, you're gonna get about 5.6 degrees of a sloping object. So putting it all together, what does that mean? Well, the R7 has a slower sensor readout than the R6, and by how much? It's about a little less than a factor of two. What that means is, if you're taking a picture of something tracking 180 degrees in about one second, the background is going to shift by about nine degrees R7, and it'll shift about five and a half degrees in the R6. That may not be significant, but it depends on your use case. If your use case needs that you can pan and track an object that quickly without a distorted background, or an object is traveling that fast through your field of view, you probably want to switch to the mechanical shutter in a lot of cases. If you're able to get away with something slower, then you can use the electronic shutter, say, on the R6, because it has a little bit better performance. So it'll come down to your use case, but keep in mind, if you're dealing with fast-moving objects with the R7, stick to the mechanical shutter. With the R6, you can probably get away with either unless it's moving significantly faster than with the R7. All right, so that's all I got for this video, folks. Let me know down in the comments if you like this kind of content, and if you'd like to see more photography slash camera types of stuff on here, feel free to give me your input down below if it interests you. Also, I've noticed that 99% of you are not subscribed, so if you're interested in this kind of content, go ahead and push that subscribe button, and that will hopefully motivate me to make more content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.